F. Gartigamod underwent a phase three randomized trial uh, enrolling about 167 patients across multiple nations, multiple centers around the world to look at the efficacy uh, of this FCRN inhibitor in generalized myasthenia gravis. And there were several unique aspects to the trial. One was the study population. Heretofore, all studies in MG included only patients who had antibody to the acetylcholine receptor. The FDA was convinced to look at a small subset of non-acetylcholine receptor antibody positive patients, 20%. They would not be included in the primary analysis, but would be a window on the response to the therapy. And then patients were randomized one-to-one -one treated four infusions on a weekly basis of 10 milligrams per kilogram of active study drug or placebo, and then monitored. The second unique aspect was the primary outcome, which was defined as what we call an MG ADL responder. And that was the MG activities of daily living score, which is the standard FDA mandated outcome measure, was modified to say, we want a two point change but they have to sustain this improvement for four consecutive weeks. And the improvement had to begin within a week of their last infusion. So if you only had this response for three of the four weeks down the road, you weren't a responder, uh, even though you may have been better. And then the retreatment criteria was that you had to return to your pre-infusion ADL score within two points before you were allowed to be retreated, and then you got a second cycle. And what the data showed that nearly 70% of patients achieved this ADL responder versus some 30% in the placebo arm. And placebo responses are our bane in MG trials. They can go as high as 42% in some of our trials, and there are numbers of reasons why. Um, when we look at that response, what we also noted was that individuals achieved what we call minimal symptom expression. Those individuals who had ADL scores of zero or one, which means essentially no disease. And overwhelmingly, the patient population achieved that in this first cycle of therapy. Then the question came, how reproducible is it? And so those individuals going into cycle two, what we noted is that their response was similar to cycle one for the antibody positive population and the overall population as well. The response was rapid in both instances, seeing response within one uh, infusion, clearly by two infusions. The nadir was reached a week after their fourth infusion and then the antibody level and the IgG level rose back to baseline, where the placebo arm, no such change was seen. Critically, there was no alteration of albumin because FCRN also can modulate albumin. And there was no change in cholesterol, though that may be related to an albumin situation uh, as well. Um, and they're all subclasses, IgG1, IgG2, 3, and 4, all demonstrated this uh, kind of response. What we also found, as I already talked about, was the durability of the drug, and that more than half uh, had in excess two to three months improvement, small numbers, much less so. So clearly a beneficial uh, response, much better than plasma exchange and IVIG, in my own personal opinion. Um, and so we found this to be highly efficacious. Those treated in the second arm, well, in the first arm, there was a small percent that did not uh, respond and that did so in the second infusion. And so failing one does not preclude a response in the, in the second, which is important information as a clinician. Uh, the side effect, the safety profile, I call it nominal pretty well equally distributed between placebo and active drug uh, arms of the, of the population. Critically, no infusion-related events, actually more in the placebo arm than in the treated arm. There were slightly increased more infections, UTIs, 
um, nasopharyngitis of that sort in the treated arm. They were pretty mild. None of them were overly severe. There were three dropouts in each arm and they were unrelated to study drug. So all in all, the safety profile was very, very uh, good. And I think it has set a new bar for trials to come that unless your product meets this kind of a safety profile, you're probably not gonna gain access into the market um, because uh, we've seen such uh, nice responses with this product. 